In this video, we're gonna talk about four things that you must know about the PPP loan forgiveness. The exemptions, the timing, the caps, and the idle grant. But before we get into it, if this is your first time at our channel or you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button at the bottom. My name is Travis Sickle, Certified Financial Planner, helping you reach your financial goals. So this isn't really a surprise that the SBA and the Treasury wanted to make the PPP loan forgiveness application a little bit easier. And that's what they did last week with the simplified version. And that's Form 3508S and the S is for simplified. Now previously it was only the original form and the easy form, but now this is for the simplified version. And this is for those loans that are 50,000 or less. Less. And the reason why they're focusing on 50,000 or less, we can find that in the interim final ruling for this newest application. And if we look at the final ruling right here, I've highlighted it. There are approximately 3.57 million outstanding PPP loans for 50,000 or less, totaling 62 billion of the 525 billion in PPP loans. Approximately 1.71 million of those loans of 50,000 or less were made to businesses that reported having zero employees. And this ruling wasn't just for those that had 50,000 or less to make their lives easier. It's also making the SBA's job easier and the treasury and of course the lender's job significantly easier because it's simplifying everything. This form is simplified as well as the documentation. But the first thing that I wanna point out and why this is so much easier is because there's a huge exemption. And if we look back at the final ruling, the exemption is a de minimis exemption from the full-time equivalent, the FTE, the employee reduction penalty for PPP loans of 50,000 or less and the de minimis exemption for the employee salary and wage reduction penalty for PPP loans of 50,000 or less. So what that means is previously, if you laid off or furloughed some of your employees or reduced their hours, then you were going to get a reduction in the amount of overall forgiveness on your PPP loan. But thankfully, now this is an exemption, so it does not mean anything if you're qualifying for the 3508S. What this means is that all you need to do is look at your actual expenses and the covered period. And you can see this again on page six of the interim final ruling, a borrower that uses SBA form 3508S or lender's equivalent form is exempt from any reductions in the borrower's loan forgiveness amount based on reductions in full-time equivalent employees. And that is section 1106D2 of the CARES Act or reductions in employee salary or wages that would otherwise apply. And I did put this in the previous PPP loan forgiveness video, and I'll leave that in the description at the bottom so you can watch that for the 3508S application full walkthrough. But if we look at the directions, it also says, again, borrowers that use SBA form 3508S are exempt from reductions in loan forgiveness amounts based on the reductions in full-time equivalent employees or in salaries or wages. So I wanna make it crystal clear, this is an exemption. You don't have to worry about it. Put it off to the side, only focus on the costs. And this brings me to point number two, which is choosing between the eight versus the 24 weeks. But this no longer really matters because of those exemptions. So previously when we were going through this math, we were trying to figure out which was more advantageous to use the eight weeks or the full 24 weeks to maximize forgiveness. Now the real issue in choosing eight versus 24 was a matter of whether or not you furloughed or laid off or reduced any hours for your employees. But now that doesn't matter, so all you need to do is focus on the cost over the full 24 weeks. And one example of where this might not work, where you would have to choose one versus the other, is if you were open for eight weeks and you were paying all of your employees, and then for whatever reason, you had to close down, obviously because of COVID-19 and the pandemic. After eight weeks, you closed down, but you didn't have enough overhead expenses to 
cover the other two weeks worth of PVP funds that you received. So you were trying to figure out, well, if I extend it, then I can maybe include the rents for those other months. But those months that you didn't have employees working or reduced hours, that would reduce the amount of forgiveness. So it was trying to figure out what was the most advantageous way of figuring this out. But thankfully, because that doesn't matter anymore, you can tie those costs in and not have to worry about choosing the eight versus the 24 weeks. Which brings me to point number three, and those are the caps. So again, previously with the exemptions and the calculations, it was getting a little confusing on trying to figure out what was the best way to maximize your forgiveness. Now the caps, as you'll see on the application, only apply to the owner employees or the self-employed individuals or general partners, not to your employees, just the owners or the general partners. So again, what that means is, let's say that you opened up, but you reduced your staff in half or you cut their wages in half, for whatever reason, your total payroll was cut in half. Well, that means if you extend it to the full 24 weeks, well, 24 weeks is certainly gonna cover the full amount of your loan if you reduced it by 50% because you got 10 weeks worth but you're using a covered period of 24 weeks. And because you're exempt, you're not getting any reduction because you reduced hours or you reduced headcount. And without paying yourself for the extended period, if you didn't have any income coming through the door, well, to use the full 24, again, you were gonna use zeros for all those weeks that you weren't paying yourself. So now, because you're exempt and there's a cap, you can still tie in all of those expenses over that 24 week period and have zero reductions. Now, everything to this point has been the gravy train, but now we're gonna talk about number four, which is the idle grant. And it's great that you still got the idle grant, but when it comes to the PPP loan forgiveness, you're still gonna have to reduce it by the amount of the idle grant that you received. And you're gonna see it at the top of the application where you're going to put in your idle advance amount. Now this is not the loan, this is only the advance, and that will reduce the amount of PPP loan forgiveness. So you're gonna put your idle advance amount in your idle application number, and then you're going to reduce the amount of your PPP loan forgiveness by the amount of the idle advance or the idle grant. And that is what you're gonna put in the forgiveness amount. So while you still have the PPP loan amount right here, you're still gonna have to reduce it by the idle grant or the idle advance, and then you're gonna put that final amount at the bottom with the forgiveness amount. So to wrap it up and give you one final tip on the PPP loan forgiveness, focus on the payroll first. If you can cover 100% of the PPP loan with just payroll over the 24 week period, it's gonna make pulling all these records a little bit easier. So then when you submit it to the lender, they can quickly review it and give you forgiveness. And remember, this is not a race of getting the PPP loan forgiveness earlier rather than later. While you're gonna get peace of mind, there isn't gonna be an additional benefit in getting that loan forgiveness. Now, if you're really uncertain of whether or not you're gonna get loan forgiveness on a particular expense or report, talk to your lender because they're gonna be the ones that's going to look at your PPP loan and they're only gonna submit the final form which shows the loan amount. Now, if the SBA does an audit, which they could, then they're gonna go back and look at all their calculations. So even if you're going through all of the math and pulling all those reports, you still need to keep them for at least six years. And if you're still going through any of this documentation, if you have questions on it, leave them in the comments down below and watch some of my other PPP loan forgiveness videos. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom. Thank you.